Hello once again audience, it is me, your boy TPT, coming at you, not live, and not from Twitch TV. I hope you all have a fantastic day today, and I hope you had a very Merry Christmas. And, as a Christmas present to you all, I decided, you know what, I haven't uploaded in like two and a half months. I probably should get around to that, shouldn't I? So... With that being said, um, this is going to be a EU4 guide on vassals. Yes, vassals, um, colonial nations, personal unions, client states, all the good stuff. Oh, and of course, tributaries as well, and you've got your colonial nations. That's why I picked Portugal, because it's in a perfect, perfect spot to um, really cover all of our bases. So, in the game of European Universalists 4, you can create yourself a number of various different subjects. And these subjects will serve under you in various ways and uh, perform various, you know, duties um, that will assist you in achieving your desired goals. Now, there's a number of different types of vassals and we've actually got three here ourselves. Um, so we'll start off with the first one and in my opinion this is one of the most common ones which is colonial nations. So, with your colonial nations, if we go over to the colonial and trade region, you'll see that the new world is split up into a number of different regions. This is, you know, you've got your colonial Mexico, colonial Colombia, colonial Brazil, colonial La Plata, Peru, Louisiana, California, Alaska, Eastern America, Canada, and the Caribbean. As well as you also have one extra one over here, which is Colonial Australia. So, I know, look, I know, okay, these borders are really disgusting. This is a multiplayer game, so try not to judge too heavily, um, particularly about this one, shall we say. Anyway, anyway. So, now these colonial nations form, so when you have five fully cored cities... So, you know, you, you're colonizing, you'll be colonizing. Uh, do we actually have any active colonies? Yeah, so see, so this, you'll be colonizing it, all right? It's not, again, this isn't a, uh, it's not a city yet, because it's still a colony. So once it hits the thousand population and turns into a province that looks like this, that's considered a city, okay? Now, when you get five of those within a colonial region, it will form a colonial nation. Now, this nation, it will be under your vassalage. Um, it will also transfer trade power to you, I believe, 30% uh, off the top of my head, maybe 50, actually. Um, might be able to check here. I think it, I think it's 50. Uh, if we look for... Uh, Caribbean... Yeah, see, so they transfer 50% of their trade power to you. Um, they also pay you a tariffs, as they call them. These are called tariffs, and you can actually set the efficiency of the tariff by spending admin to increase or decrease the tariffs by 5%. Um, you can also control their governor, and you can get them to start wars without having to declare those wars yourself. So, if you go here, okay, if you go to Caribbean, or the Carib Caribus, and go to Start War and Colony, and you click on that, and get them to start the war, you will not be caught into that. So, you won't actually be caught into that. You will just... I'm sorry for the inappropriate names again, by the way. It was multiplayer games, so... That's why some of these names are probably a little confusing. Um, but yeah, so you could, you know, normally, oh, you declare on them. Oh, look, you know, I'm getting everyone called in, you know, blah, blah, blah. If I get my colonial nation to declare on that, it'll just be like a straight 1v1 unless someone else 
intervenes. Now, something else additionally, if you look over here, you'll see this bar next to some of them, not all of them, just some of them. And so what this is, these are you know, the colonial nations you have that produce gold. So as they produce gold, every it's about every year or so, they'll send a treasure fleet back to you containing the gold that they've harvested it's it's well it says the gold they've harvested but it's actually about 50 ducats per, just per mine it's pretty much 50 ducats per mine um although i believe it is affected by autonomy so do keep that in mind um and they'll send that back to you in a lump sum shipment and it will give you inflation okay, okay keep that in mind it will give you inflation so do be careful of that um and also, an additional thing to know is that it can be privateered. If you have, if it, if you're getting gold from like could have been chats, and you've got people privateering in Mexico, or you know on the way, then it will actually, like it will actually take some of your gold. You know, you will actually lose some of your gold from the treasure fleet only a percentage you won't lose the whole thing but you'll lose a percentage of it to that you know that that flow through now some other things you can do with them if we look around here you can uh get sailors from them you can placate them this is a very useful button um essentially it just decreases their liberties so see portuguese peru um this 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 but these uh this button works with every um when you have except for the junior partners which is the personal union which again i'll get to in a second but you know it works for your your colonies it works for your vassals it works for your client states it works for your tributaries i will i think i actually might not i'll have to check on that one but anyway um now something else very handy to know and this becomes super useful late in the late game is if the colony has at least 10 cities, again, cities, not provinces, but cities, so, you know, this one doesn't count. If it has at least 10 pro cities, it will also give you a merchant. So that's why I have 11 different merchants, because of all my colonies. Oh, pardon me, sorry. Because of all my colonies, and see, I don't, I don't even have trade ideas and I've got 11 dang merchants because Portuguese Peru, Portuguese Australia, Mexico, Caribbean, you know, etc, etc. So anyway, um, yeah, so they, they give you merchants, they give you your lump sum gold payments. Now, something to keep in mind with their liberty desire, okay, that is a bit different from the other ones as you can see here, is, okay, first of all, First of all, the tariffs increases their liberty desire. Um, so, as you can see, they've got 10% tariffs. The reason it actually says 17% is because of our tariff efficiency, as you can see down there. Right? So, it's actually 10%, but it's 17.5% because of the fact that we have all of those bonuses increasing the tariff efficiency. But they only get the liberty desire for the ten percent. So another thing is when your subjects get um, when they get administrative efficiency, it does also increase their desire to be free of your reins. Um, if they have better te dip technology than you, it will increase their desire. Um, that's also standard as well. That's across all subjects. Um, and something unique to colonial nations is they also gain liberty desire directly proportional to your mercantilism. Now, I'm not going to really bother explaining what mercantilism is because I believe I've done it in the earlier trade video, but it does make sense that that's, that's a thing though because of um, just the uh, with the concept of what mercantilism actually is. It does make sense. Um, cause it took me a while to sort of like, really? You know, but then when I realized that, you know, mercantilism is all about like the local economy rather than importing from overseas. And so that's why they don't really like it. Uh, anyway, 
Um, we'll move on to the next subject, which is Serbia. So Serbia is a vassal of ours. Now, there's multiple ways to create vassals. So first of all, you can actually peacefully vassalize people below 100 dev. So if I go down to this button right here, to offer vassalization, you must have a military alliance, have a relation of at least plus 190, and the target country must be at peace. And, you know, there is a, there is a few modifiers there, as you can see. If you own any of their core provinces, they won't, want, they won't accept vassalization at all. Um, they also have to be below 100 dev. Um, it doesn't mention it there, but they have to be below 100 dev, otherwise they won't accept vassalization. And also, you know, you have to be all buddy-buddy with them. So that's one way. A second way is by releasing vassals. So I can go to... So if you're at the diplomacy screen of your own empire, the bottom right, there's a create a subject from one of your provinces. It's also the Z key, in case you're wondering. Um, and you can release vassals here. So say I wanted to release Morocco out. I'd click this. I can also, you can choose to play as them if you'd like. And if I release them, boom. See, I'm now, I'm not, I haven't just released Morocco. I'm also playing as Morocco as well, which is pretty neato mosquito, if you ask me. Um, and as you can see, they do start out with a bunch of ideas already filled out. And the third way to get vassals is, damn, they really hate us. So, see, look at this play K right there. Oh, very nice. No liberty design. But the third play way to gain vassals is to take it in a war. So again, they have to be below about a hundred, um, and you can demand vassalization. So if I say I just uh, let me try and find someone that hasn't like got a truce with me. Be cape. Uh, give it a second here. Um, but yeah, so you can actually demand that they be vassalized to you in a peace deal as well. So I think I already said it, but they have you below 100 dev. Um, they will also be really pissed off at you. They get a minus, I believe it's 100 um, penalty. Oh. I believe they get a minus 100 penalty. So if we look. Yep, so you cannot demand it requiring more than a hundred war score. So because because they're so large, um, it does you pay for every single one of their provinces. So it does unfortunately so it wasn't a hundred dev, sorry, it was a hundred war score for the force vassalization. But again, when you do it, uh, it does make you really pissed off at them. Sorry, it does make them really pissed off at you, which means it is can be quite a while before you actually integrate them. Um, and because of that, you know, it is more of a sort of a long con kind of thing. You know, you have to be able to, uh, put down a revolt or two. Sometimes they will rise up in, against you, etc., etc. So anyway, um, now with the, uh, with these guys, you can do a couple good things. You can just seize one of their lands. You can forcibly take it. It will increase their liberty of desire by a hell of a lot, but you can actually seize their provinces. You can put a relative on the throne, which will put their dynasty to become yours. Um, you can also enforce religion. So as you can see, Serbia is actually Orthodox at the moment. So if I click this button, look, their state religion is now Catholic. So you can force their religion. Um, you can also cause them to divert trade towards you, which gives a full 100% of their trade. You can enable scootage, um, which basically gives you um, an extra 50% of their income, but also if you get rid of it, it does like really piss them off. Um, but never, uh, my honest opinion is never enable scootage, um, particularly in multiplayer, as it can cause some very serious issues regarding bugs. Scootage is a very buggy, uh, it's very buggy. You know, like, you can have it where, like, the uh, an enemy player can declare war on your scootage vassal without declaring war on you, and stuff like that. It's just, I would personally suggest never using this, okay? Because it's also not worth it, right? They're going to fight in your damn wars, and they're going to die in your damn wars. They ain't getting out of jack. So, I would never, ever, ever click this button. It's 
it's really annoying and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do really um, you can also, again, you can also divert trade up to 100%, and you can also get them to embargo your rivals too, which is a little neat, but obviously all these two do increase their liberty desire, so keep that in mind. Now, the next type of subject we've got is the personal union, also known as a junior partner. So, this can happen, it's... <sighs> Personal union mechanics are very complicated, so I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible, but it is very, very complicated, particularly in the specifics of, in of inheriting and that. Um, so I'm not going to go into full details with this because this is a beginner guide and personal unions get way more complicated than a beginner guide needs. They get very, very confusing. Um... So again, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip out on some of the uh, the specifics and just keep it relatively general. So, as you may know, um, in the game of the U4, your king has a dynasty, and you can get people of different countries from that same dynasty. So as you can see, Austria and Great Britain both have a von Habsburg on their throne. You know, pretty interesting, right? However, did you did you read that down there? On monarch death, succession war between Hungary and Great Britain. So if I were to say... Ah! What's this? Look at that right there. They're under a personal union now, aren't they? Damn right they are. So, if a king... Of the same dynasty of yours dies without an heir. There are some very specific circumstances which will allow you to get a personal union. So, first of all, um, one of the big parts is regarding rivals and allies. So, if you have a royal marriage with them, you're more likely to get it. If you're allied, you're more likely to get it. Um, but there are mechanics revolved around rivals getting it as well. But again, I'm not going to go into the specifics of those because it gets very confusing. But needless to say, all you need to know is that you can get under a personal union by having your king die without an heir whilst being the dynasty of a different nation. Now, also, if Great Britain were at war, they wouldn't be able to contest it either. Which is uh, something pretty interesting. So if Great Britain declared a war... I'm um, oh, sorry, um, if Austria declared a war... My apologies. If Austria declared a war and their king died whilst they were at war, they wouldn't get put into a PU. So keep that in mind. If you're at war, you know, if you, if you have someone's dynasty and you don't have an heir and you need an heir, well, I would suggest just, you know, throwing off a war or two because you can't be put in a person under a war. Now... There are also uh, another few ways to do it. First one is missions. So Great Britain, if we swap over to Great Britain. Great Britain actually gets uh, no, sorry, it is um, it's well, this is the English mission tree. Currently, this is in, but obviously this does include the Great British stuff. Um, but it's actually under is it subjugate phrase. No, hundred years war. It's in here somewhere. Um, in which, basically, um, you can get a Cassis, I think it actually, I think it actually is in strategic control, but it doesn't show it because he actually did it, and he does have France under a PU, but basically, um, you can get a mission, which gives you a subjugation, uh, slash claim the throne Cassis belly. Subjugation is a bit different, but this one's... Specifically, it's called like a claim the throne CP. I can't remember the exact term for it. Um, I probably have to go into like a fresh 14 4 to find it. But it gives you a, a CB, which for I believe it was 80 war score, you can um, you can seize the French throne. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to force France under a personal union underneath you. Um, there is like, I think there's a one or two other missions. Um, I believe Spain also gets one for Portugal, actually. 
if I can find it. I believe Spain also actually gets one for Portugal. Um, I think it's this one. But again, because because we're already under a PU, it uh, it doesn't always show them, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I believe it's the Recover Portugal one. Is it? No. No, it's... Uh... <sighs> again, I, I can't quite remember which one it is, because it's been a while since I've played these these countries. Um, this is a bit of an older save file. I haven't, I haven't played this in a while. It was a multiplayer on our server. 8 p.m. Australian Eastern... Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fridays, every week. Um, except last week and this week, because of uh, Christmas Eve... Uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve, of course. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so you can get it in the missions. And there's also a way of doing it via claiming a throne. So, I'll see if Prasha has any examples. Um, who has... Who's got dynasties they're sharing? Yes, okay, so you share it with Munich. Never mind, they're already a subject. That doesn't work. You gotta, you gotta find someone that's not a subject. I probably should... Uh, well, no, I should have looked at this beforehand, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so, you can claim the throne... Um, also, um, personal unions only work in Christian nations, so, unfortunately, I do think it's kind of dumb, but, ooh, do we have one here? It looks like we do. Um, I think it's kind of dumb, but only Christians can get personal unions, so keep that in mind. Right, so, say that High Newt had lost their heir. Okay. So, what I can do is, if I royal marry them, okay, if we royal marry Hynood, and then just put up the speed. So, you know, we're, we're, we're buddy buddy. We're, uh, we got the, our claim is on their throne. It's also got Toulouse on the throne too. It's pretty nice. So, they've got no heir. Our dynasty and we have a royal marriage with them. Then, we can go down to this button right here. Claim throne. Do you wish to claim the throne of Haino? Hi this will grant us a casus belly to make them our junior partner in a personal union. This action will lower our relations with all countries with which we have a royal marriage. Confirm. Then, if I was to wait a month, and then go here. Claim on the throne. Take capital high newt. Okay. And then unpause again. All right. So we've so essentially we have obviously look, I, I didn't say we were gonna win this, alright? But so we have waited till our dynasty is the same as theirs. We've we've remarried them and then claimed the throne. And then, what we can do is we can go down to this for 84%. We can demand that they form a union under us. So that's the way that you get... That's another way that you can get a personal union. Um, that one's probably the most annoying. Um, most people typically will do it peacefully or with missions. Um, the, the claim to throat thing is pretty annoying to do because it requires some very specific circumstances. But, you know, such is life. So anyway, let's swap on over for our next subject. Okay, now our next subject is, of course, the tributary. Yeah. So... Tributaries don't have as many uh, little cool interactions, unfortunately. You've got send additional troops, pay off debt, grant province, demand artifact, demand additional tribute, bestow gifts, and this little thing up here. So, this right here is the most unique part about tributaries. Essentially, once a year, Ming will demand tribute from all of its tributaries. So, for um, Sang, once a year, we will receive, well, we will demand 
three administrative power from saying. Now, you can also decline this. However, if your trust breaks and uh, drops enough, the eventually your overlord will drop you and murder you. So keep that in mind. All right. Only, only you know, break that if you're willing to go to war with your overlord. So anyway, so once a year you'll get eleven ducats. 3 admin, 3 diplo, 3 mil, or 800 manpower. And that increases depending on your size. So, for example, Korea is 80, 12, 12, 12, or 1,008. So, you've got all the different options here. And yeah, so that will happen once every year. Now, you also have a number of unique interactions. So... First of all, you've got to send additional troops. So if Aitaya is at war, you can click this button. You can directly give them 7,000 manpower. So if we find someone at war, I'll actually show you. Uh, doesn't look like anybody is at war, unfortunately. But that will actually directly go to their manpower pool. Like they will directly receive the 7,000 troops. Or the 8,000 troops, or the 5,784 troops. They will directly receive that into their manpower pool. Uh, so, you can also take on their debt. Grant them a province, demand, artifact. So, if I was to demand an artifact from Mong Pai, I would gain it five prestige and they would lose five prestige i can also demand additional tribute which gives me a significant uh portion of money in relation to their tribute it's about a hot it's about double their yearly tribute worth but it only takes money unfortunately as you can see it only gives money you can't take extra points and stuff I know, I know, right? <coughs> it really sucks. You can, you can only take money. Um, also, if they're super small, you can't take points. You can only take ducats or uh, manpower. As you can see with Khmer. Is there only a one province minor? In... So, if they're really small, you can't take the points. Anyway, um, you can also bestow gifts upon them, which will basically you send them a bunch of money, and they'll be less pissed off at you. So, boom. And then if I look at Mong Quang's liberty desire, bestowed us gifts minus fifteen percent. Cha Ching. Now there are two main ways to get tributes. Uh, if I'll find an example. Yeah, so you can either declare war for it with someone directly um, directly adjacent to you. If I add core, I believe it should show up in the peace deal. Um, or alternatively, you can also just offer it peacefully as well. So you can establish a tributary. And... You know, obviously you've got all of the uh, modifiers there. So if if we were neighbors, they would accept to become our tribute. Actually, these guys will accept to become our tribute, will they? Oh, no, never mind. We're not neighbors. Well, again, they have to be directly adjacent to you. So they have to be directly adjacent. Um, and you can take that peacefully. So if I was to... I think it's because they're not adjacent is the problem. But, um... But, yeah, so keep that in mind. Um, but I believe I... Normally, yeah, there it is. Tri Ming Tributary, so you can demand it in a war as well. Um, you can get direct... Um, you can give direct... Uh, CB to establish a tributary 
um, with neighbors, but typically I would just like, you know, if you're, if you're impatient and they don't directly border you, you can just drop a deck on them and then you can demand it in the peace deal. And you can demand it to non, non participants as well, like secondary participants too. So, make tributary, make tributary, oops. Make tributary and make tributary. Um, and so you can you can do it through that as well. Now the final the final type of uh, well it's I could talk about shoguns and daimyos, but I probably won't because that's a little too specific. Um, but it's to do with Japan. Actually, does he have any left? No, he he doesn't have any left either. So I'd have to. No, nah, look, I'm a bit lazy, so I won't mention that. But it's just some extra vassal interactions, um, and also whoever owns uh, Kyoto is the daimyo, and they get to boss around all the other daimyos. Um, daimyos can. Uh, Sorry, um, they're the Shogun, and they can boss around the Daimyos. Um, Daimyos can ally each other, they can declare war on each other internally, unless, of course, they're in a war together already, etc, etc. So, anyway. Um, so let's fast forward to... Look, where is it? It's in Diplo, it should be, or is it in, uh... Yeah, there it is. Take 23 client states, if I just do this. And we now have client states. So, if I was to say, you know, oh, what's that? I'll show you in a second. Um, so, if I was to say, get this, and I would create a client state, I can call it whatever I want. I can make it a monarchy or a public or a revolutionary, when revolutionaries form, obviously. And I can make it my dynasty or a local dynasty. And boom, look at that. I just created my own damn country. Shazam. Now, they do start off with generic client state traditions, unfortunately, and I personally don't think they're very good. In fact, they're pretty garbage, except for making money. Um, but essentially, it just acts as a vassal that you can create out of nothing. It's just a vassal that you can create out of nothing. However... Unfortunately, you can't make them in overseas territory, so it can only be on your home continent. So I can make them over here, you know, it doesn't have to be directly adjacent, I can make them over here, but I can't make them over here. Um, and I believe if the province is, has a direct land route to your capital, you can also make them. Um, but I, I'm not 100% sure on that. But I believe that as a direct land route, you can also make the client states. Um, but it's just that it's an overseas province because there's no direct land route to the capital and it's in a different continent. And thus, you make a client state. So they, again, they function essentially, basically, just the same as vassals. As you can see, it's pretty much the exact same as vassals. Um, nothing real fancy there, except they get an additional negative 25% for being a client state, which is another reason why they're really useful. Um, something else to keep in mind, by the way, is with the vassal and client state, um, liberty desire, it factors in, if you look there, it says relative power of all vassals and client states. So, basically... What it's saying is, when considering the strength of the individual, it will factor in the strength of every vassal. So, this guy, he might be small, right? But he's got a 24% relative power. Why is that? Well, it's because he's also factoring the power of both Morocco and Serbia as well. So that's pretty important to know. However, that does not occur with personal unions and colonial nations. If you look, colonial nations actually get no relative power for a start, and 
um, personal unions only get their own personal rods of power. So it's very, very, very handy to know that. Um, and that's why personal unions are some of the most overpowered um, subjects that there is. Now, next point in regards annexing. So, you can't annex colonial nations because they'll just pop out another colonial nation. You can annex a vassal after 10 years, and as long as it maintains a plus 90, 190 opinion of you. You can annex a personal union after 50 years, and it also has to have plus 190 relations with you. Or alternatively, you, there's also a very small chance that you can basically inherit... Um, I think I should show it on this one. Yeah, see? If the, if the country is small, there's actually a chance you can just directly inherit it. Which means you just get the whole thing. So basically, like, if I inherited Spain, it would just be like this. Oops. Like, boom. That's what inheriting does. That's what it would do. It would just give me the whole thing. Um, again, obviously, you can also just specifically... Um, and it does also transfer all their uh, things over to you. So, um, and it doesn't combine them either. So, New Spain, and it could have been Chad's. They were both Mexican region. But, don't worry. They uh, still give you the additional merchants. So, I've got 18 merchants. I've also got, you know, so many colonial nations. It's one of the reasons I love personal unions. And the same also works with vassals as well. So vassals, you know, 10 years. Um, client states, it's also 10 years. Um, you can't annex tributaries. You can an an annex daimyos, again, 10 years. Um, and yeah, so I believe that's covered all those points. So, um, yeah, so again, uh, so with the personal unions, again, it's 50 years. Um, and you can either annex them directly or if they're small enough, again, if they're small enough, the size of the country contributes heavily, heavily, but if they're small enough, you can also have a chance at just straight up annexing them as well. So keep that in mind. You don't always have to waste diplo points on it. So anyway, guys, I believe I have covered everything that I wanted to cover in this episode. Um, if I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I will gladly correct any mistakes or things I've missed. If you have any other of your own personal comments that you'd like to make regarding it. Um, if you're wondering why I've got Cat Jam in the bottom right hand corner of my screen. Are you? Well, you can find that out over at my stream, twitch.tv slash twinsplaytechit. Feel free to check it out. Um, typically I stream Saturday through a Tuesday. However, because I don't have work right now, I'm pretty much streaming every single day at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So, until then, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Um, before I do go, of course, though, I'd like to give a couple shout-outs. Uh, also, join my Discord, link in the description down below. And feel free to check out the EU for Casuals Discord and the EU for Australia Discord. They are great places to hang out. Obviously, EU for Australia is Australian, and the EU for Casuals covers both North America and Europe. That I would say mostly North America, with some European players as well. So anyway, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.